and hello everybody welcome back so um, now we, uh, we continue our investigation into why the Plasius flu looks like this okay so we are in an investigation to this uh, flat plate flow for open foam uh, we want to find out what's going on with all these uh, red bits here which means the velocity is bigger than the free stream velocity and we're wondering why okay so with that we need to go back to our Navier-Stokes equations and see what assumptions we put in to get our Blasius flow in the first place now why are we doing this we already found out that uh, you know no matter how much you adjust the mesh size it still gives you the same results right yeah it still gives you uh, this this results right there's this uh, layer over here and even if you if you give uh, if you give this uh, uh, entrance region you give it time to for the free flow to develop it still doesn't doesn't quite uh, do this thing justice there's still this uh, little uh, red part over here that comes about from a build-up in pressure over here all right so there is some uh, there's some high pressure point here and as a result of that everywhere else being a low pressure point and then uh, you have flow going up from that place the high pressure to the low pressure that's what the neighbor stokes equation actually does uh, the fluids flows like that so uh, we need to re-examine our neighbor stokes equation to see whether the blasius flow assumptions actually uh, apply in this place yeah so what what actually happens there is that uh, you have some assumptions order of magnitude assumptions for example in terms of scale the x velocity is usually much bigger than the y velocity i'm not going to go through all the rigor down here and of course um, in terms of length scale the x length scale is much bigger than the y length scale because well y y length scale is about the boundary layer thickness okay where is it yeah the y length scale is usually from here to here usually x length scale can go across the whole plate okay so x length scale usually is uh, is talking about the whole length of the plate that's the order of magnitude so this this should be satisfied for our uh, Blasius flow kind of uh, equations now let's see whether it holds for our case okay so let me take a look at the u x component we can see that uh, it's actually on the order of magnitude of 1.3 let's say meters per second so in our case we have u x about 1.3 meters per second and let's see the u y Hmm. Okay, for the most part is uh, at zero. You can see here. Over here, it's right at zero, but here, here the U Y is more than one. Can you see? You have a U Y about zero point six over here, and these white lines. So, at the leading edge leading edges V so that is yeah U is just the X velocity here's V is about 0 0.6 meters per second is this to be expected answer is yes because uh, using the scaling arguments if you look at this line says uh, that Prandtl says that uh, about half the terms in the Navier Stokes equation are negligible in the boundary layer flow except in a small region near the leading edge of the plate so in terms of the Blasius solution obviously here we'll have an anomaly so that's uh, an expected thing okay but uh, yeah but actually what is 
what is causing the u to be so-called uh, comparable in order of magnitude to v what's actually going on um, yeah and if we have u really much greater than v will we then get our uh, flow pattern that we want so we'll want to investigate that all right so we'll we'll think about it think about it this way right look look at this as the flow is coming from the left hand side it's gradually coming to a stop over here that's uh, to be expected but as the flow kind of stagnates over here the pressure builds up it is also actually stagnating some of the flow here so this is a high pressure point uh, where a fair amount of fluid actually uh, bunches up over here it will collect up over here it will start to slow down over here all right Can you see it actually slows down over here okay so that the uh, there is actually a um, yeah let, let's take a look at the glyphs okay let's see where it where it's coming from we're only seeing magnitude so it's a bit hard to uh, hard to uh, see the it's hard to see where, where the flow is going so let's see the uh, let's put apply some filters we're going to put in the cell centers and then we're going to apply another filter okay this is going to be a glyph filter so we'll scale it by u and we'll have this uh, outline okay so we'll have the glyphs on okay So the coloring is like the pressure is by pressure. You can see what's happening here. The flow is like going here, going here, and then oh, here, here we have a stagnation. And uh, what happens is that um, flow then, flow then is uh, going upwards. And as the flow, this these layers grow upwards. Uh, something else has to like fill in, and because we have a zero gradient boundary condition here. Uh, there's flow actually from this uh, inlet actually coming in here because this this liquid is uh, bringing along you can see this 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 line here follow the mouse yeah this liquid here is going up this way and what is do uh, what is doing is it is actually uh, applying forces on the liquid here is dragging uh, fluid along this way because uh, there's some viscosity and as a result uh, we have more and more flow coming in from the bottom here okay of course we have the usual boundary layer flows as we uh, go further and further down you see over here it looks more and more like a boundary layer flow towards this side right it's just here that's uh, a little uh, weird which is normal okay so that's a that's actually a physical phenomenon it's nothing to do with uh, what we are scaling and sizing uh, how can we then reduce this effect well uh, if we have uh, if we want this uh, u to be much much greater than y uh, the y velocity which is v we kind of want to reduce the viscosity effects we want to reduce the viscosity effects over here so that it kind of pulls less liquid along so to speak so let's reduce viscosity okay so we're gonna make a new case uh, CP AR flat plate extended graded to flat plate uh, low viscosity okay and we're going to change directory there and we'll run it all clean and uh, we are going to VI the run. Okay, so we'll just rename it low viscosity. And of course, uh, I was saying before, we can actually uh, uh, get this uh, clean up our out uh, our window. Okay, so we go to the cavity. 
we can actually log it down we can uh, instead of having all these uh, output from open form we can actually use the log function so instead of it giving us every time step you know it prints out something we can uh, yeah we can save all of this into a log file so we can we can actually uh, make this into uh, a lot a process kind of thing so we have our ICO form we give it the right arrow and then we go and log it oopsie insert not F2 this is not Microsoft uh, log n so we'll use the cat lock over here okay so we'll do it as uh, the open form uh, tutorial says here so yeah we'll do uh, as the tutorial says and then we'll change we'll change the name from flat plate uh, extended or something we change it to lovis.form okay so we'll have a way to differentiate so this is a this is a very very good way to clean up our input so we type run okay only the block mesh will show so this will run in the background can you see every time i press the uh, list the directory it's going to print out new files for us so i'm going to do an all clean and i want to show you where you can change your viscosity so just for okay just to just for good reference we want to go and look at the kinematic viscosity of water all right So let's go to constant. All right. Look at the vi kinematic viscosity of water. It's about to the order of 10 to the minus 6. At around uh, 20 degrees, it's 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meter square per second. So let's go to transport properties. And you see that the viscosity is much, much, much larger than 1 times 10 to the minus 6. So let's let's give it one point O E minus six. All right. Then we can slow. I mean, we of course we can run, and we'll see what happened. Okay, it's going to give us our results. Yeah, so we get our results. Okay, let me let me try it again. I'm gonna clean everything and go to start from the beginning. Okay, so all our stuff is there, more or less. Okay, all is there. So let's let's pop this over. Okay, should get rid of that paste a new one here hmm. yeah I'll paste it pasted it there there's a the wrong screen to look at and let's see what happens with our low viscosity case oh well, look at the pressure profile is almost uniform so that, that's a good thing. We don't have the, the small little spot there, so to speak. But the strange thing is also that our velocity profile is pretty much uniform. But look. Okay, pressures like that. But look at this. Velocity is like that. I'm going to shut all the other view down. We can see a very, very gentle, very gentle boundary layer forming. Now that the viscosity is so low, uh, we don't have very much uh, y velocity so let's take a look at the glyphs all right so we're going to want to uh, add the filter alphabetical we're going to get a cell center okay then we're going to add another filter for glyphs scale it according to velocity okay and apply okay so look at where it's going okay yeah 
you can see the boundary layer forming very slowly, very uh, slowly but surely over here. And uh, if you see the, if you try and look at the glyphs, it's barely noticeable. Okay. But uh, maybe we, we kind of want to extend. Let's just uh, extend the plate a bit to give give, give the, boundary, the boundary layer a little more time to form. Okay. So I'm going to carry on. I'm going to change. I'm going to clean up the file using the all clean script. And then we want to go to the block mesh dict and we will just extend the length of this uh, flat plate. So let's go to block mesh dict, vi block mesh dict. All right, let's extend the length. So how long do we want it? Uh, maybe, maybe we want it to be uh, three times as long. So, or maybe five, three to five times as long. So that we can see this boundary layer slowly starting to form. Yeah, and of course, the other thing we want to note that uh, look at our U, UX, the order of magnitude is on the order of 1. Look at our UY, 1 times 10 to the minus 3. That's the biggest UY you'll ever get. So the UX is indeed much larger, larger than UY. That's why our boundary layer equations sort of hold. And then we lower the viscosity. So let's increase this length maybe 10 times, okay? So we'll make it like 11. Okay, so we'll add 9 units, 9 lengths. Alright, we'll, we'll leave the grading the same, but instead of having uh, 20 cells in the x direction for this one, we will have, uh, we want to have yeah how many yeah 200 so we have 200 now just give and take about 200 all right so let's quit and let's run the thing okay it should be giving us okay you know, it'll probably take a lot longer for For the results to come out but it's coming out can you see uh, the 0 0.1 cases are coming out so we'll just wait a while for it all to come out till 0 0.5 okay so you can vi the log okay so the current number uh it's fine okay I'm going to use a page down to see where we are at. So you can see the bottom right hand corner that says 86%. That's how far down the file we are at. Okay, so it's uh, like halfway ish through. So that should be done. So we want to delete this old file this is open from file for windows that's right I'm gonna delete shift delete okay I'm going to copy and paste over. It'll probably take a while. Yeah. So let's uh, delete this to see where our boundary layers are at. Okay, I'm going to open our low viscosity. There should be the different one. Though. It should be way longer, which it is way longer. Now let's take a look at the U. You can see this boundary layer starting to form. Uh, slowly at least okay so this is our boundary layer stuff actually happening so yeah that that should be the way